the Evergrande saga has already spread out into the whole sector. It's no longer a problem of Evergrande. We've seen extreme stress actually in the Chinese property space. Uh, that's uh, on the back of the, the three red line policies and a further tightening in terms of the property tax and also some of the uh, cash flows that, the, the, that get into the escort account onshore. So the stress that we've seen in the U.S. dollar market, now it's translating back to the fundamentals, to the sales in the both primary and the secondary market. And then that has even high, a higher impact on the overall economic data. If we look at the very recent China data, we've seen weakness in construction activities. So that's concerning at this moment and how China is going to react to that actually is very, very important. One thing we need to note that this time it is different. It's mm -hmm. not as likely as before that China's going to use property as a counter cyclical measure. They will relax a little bit here and there, for example, mortgages and all, but mm -hmm. we think it's unlikely for China to change the overall rhetorics on property. Yeah, that seems to be the case, and I think the market is working with that uh, assumption. Uh, Jenny, what about uh, the technology names? And I know this is not directly linked to the fixed income story, but even so, right, the exposure that these uh, that the markets may have through the bond uh, to, through the bond route to the, the technology stocks. I mean, they're coming off again today. What's the outlook here? Tech names actually are, uh, are is one of the biggest sector in the fixed income market as well as issuers. And they're all investment grade. They're highly rated investment grade companies. They have a lot of cash uh, buffer on their balance sheet to sustain, to buffer that growth slowdown. Now, we really need to understand that China actually gets into a structural slowdown or structural change shift in terms of the growth. It, it, it's shifting from a low quality growth to a high quality growth. And when China, the overall economy is doing that, we should expect a lot of sectors, particularly the key sectors to go uh, with that. It may not be good for growth per se, but actually it may not necessarily be bad from a fixed income, particular credit perspective. That means the cash flow can be more predictable. That means that their balance sheet could be actually even stronger going forward. What would be the new normal as far as growth is concerned, um, a slower growth for China? What are you forecasting for next year and beyond? In China's growth, it's more like a shifting where the pie, they want to cut the pie. It will be from the very high debt driven growth, for example, properties at the core of it, right, um, to a higher quality growth, value add manufacturing, services sectors. That's why we think that they want to make the shift. And of course, the key question is whenever an economy that is used to high growth, high debt driven growth, when they make the transition, there will be a relatively more painful adjustment period. And then now we need to see how China is going to deal with that adjustment period. And this this, this is the core of where we've seen today in the U.S. dollar market, which is the property. This actually gives people, uh, investors, a lot of opportunities because we do think that the market has overpriced uh, excessive uh, uh, default risk in the sector. The, yes, adjustment will happen, but it doesn't necessarily mean that 50% of a de developer will default.